cool feature that's been in Rails since version 4.1 is Action Mailer Preview. And this will allow you to see what an email will look like when it gets sent out to your end users without actually generating an email. So it's a great way to test and see what your email will look like in its contents before actually sending it out. And to get started, we'll generate a new mailer with Rails Generate Mailer, and then we will create a contact class, and then within there, we'll just call a feedback action. So this creates our mailer, and take notice under the test units, we have this test, mailers, previews, and then the contact mailer preview, and this is a file that we'll be playing around with today. So if we go ahead and start up our Rails application with Rails S or Rails Server, we can navigate to a page that we can see all of the different mailers available. So navigating to our local host port 3000, then if you go to the URI rails slash mailers, you'll see all the different mailers that we have available to us. So if we click on our feedback mailer, this will generate as a HTML by default, or you can select the plain text. And this is basically going to be what's available for your mail feedback that you have created in the files. So here we have our contact mailer under the feedback.html.erb and similar for the plain text, you'll have your feedback.text.erb. So let's go ahead and generate some dynamic content so that we can put this into our email as well. So I'll just generate a scaffold and we'll call this users and then we'll just keep a first name, last name, and an email. Once this is generated, we can call regdb migrate to migrate our database. And then we can start up the application again. And off camera, I went ahead and just generated some fake data that we can use. So under our app directory, mailers, and then in the contact mailer, you'll see the feedbacks that we had created. And you can pass some information into this feedback method, something like the user, and then maybe also a message. And typically when you're generating this, you also want to set your user equal to the user and then your message equals to the message that you received from the parameters. And by setting these instance variables, this will allow us access to them similar to how a controller works in our mail template. And then under the test directory, mailers, previews, open the contact mailer preview. And here you'll see the action feedback similar to our contact mailer. And then this is simply just calling the contact mailer. However, we did add a couple of parameters to this. So we need to create a user. I'm just going to set a local variable user to user.all.sample. And this will just pick a random user. And then we also need to create our message. And we'll just create a message equals to test message. And then we need to pass these into our feedback. So we have our user and our message. And then if we go under our views, contact mailer, and then the feedback, we'll first work with the html.erb. We had this greeting, which if you remember from our contact mailer, it was just set to high. And then we can set our at user dot first name. And we can do the same for the last name. If we save this and go back to our browser and refresh, you'll see that now it says hi and then the person's name. So we can go ahead and clean this up a bit and then add in some more information like the message. So then going back to our browser again, we can refresh it, and then you'll see we have our greetings and then our test message. And while this is a very functional email, it's not very pretty. So today I also want to look at foundation for emails too. It's formally called Inc, and it is essentially a templating engine for your emails. So if you go under docs, email docs, there is a Ruby gem for this. We'll need the Inky RB gem, but then we'll also need this pre-mailer Rails gem, which will basically convert all of our styling into inline style sheets. So if you've ever created an email, you'll know that you have to put all your style inline and it can become a really large, messy email. So manually creating your email templates and everything, it doesn't really promote high maintainability, that's why you can have a consistent look and feel to all your email templates, and you can also make changes relatively easily between all of them. So within our gem file, I'll add the Inky RB and also the PreMailer Rails. Be sure to run Bundle and restart your Rails application. Next in our terminal, we can run the installer with Rails Generate Inky Install. 
and this has created two files, one in our style sheets, the foundation emails.scss, and then also in our layouts, we have our layouts, mailer.html.erb. And one thing to note, because your application style sheet does require the entire folder by default, it's going to automatically include this into your web application, and I really don't like that. So I'm actually going to move this foundation email.scss over into my vendor folder. That way we don't include this by default within our application. So I'll simply move this foundation emails.scss into the vendor folder, assets, and style sheets. An important step that we'll need to do is in our application.rb file under the config folder, we'll need to add in this line so that the foundation emails file that we've just moved will be individually pre-compiled so that we can reference to it directly. And under your views layout folder, you'll see that you now have two mailer templates. You have the new mailer template that was generated from the inky install, and then you have the old one. So unless if you already had some custom styling within your old template, you can just delete this. And then we'll work with this new one. Instead of calling the application style sheet, we're now just referencing this foundation emails. And then we have a table and some general layout, and then we're still calling the yield block to render out our templates. So on foundation's webpage, they have this tab called email templates, and here you can get an idea of what these templates look like. So I'll just pick one that I think looks nice. This password reset one looks pretty good. So I'll want to download this template. Zurb actually has these all hosted on their GitHub. And if you go under the source directory, pages, and then look for the password email. And then I'll just copy the entire container, and then we'll paste this into our contacts feedback. So back within our contact mailer feedback.html.erb, the first thing that we need to do is to rename this file. So instead of the ERB, we need to call Inky on this. And don't worry, you will still be able to use your ERB kind of commands. So I'll paste in this text, and then we can just move in our greetings and our other fields down into the necessary spots. And once you have all your changes made, and once you refresh, you'll see that this looks so much better now. So now we have this nice templated email, and it is of a responsive design. And it'll still take a little bit of tweaking to get your email looking correctly. However, if you view this frame source, you'll see all the text and everything, the inline styling that goes into this. And this would be so much more of a hassle maintain if you were just generating this email template on your own. So using the Inky framework definitely makes it a lot more maintainable, as well as pretty nice just from a default layout. So you'll definitely want to check out the documentation under the components to see all the different layouts and stylings available with the Foundation for Emails framework. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.